Well, I think why we need to make sure that young people leave school financially literate is because life is becoming increasingly complex. Um, if young people leave school without the skills, the confidence, the knowledge in financial matters, then they're going to find it really difficult to survive in society. The kinds of decisions they have to take, um, things around uh, whether they go to university or not, um, whether they take out a credit card or not, how they're going to repay the, the debt which they are almost inevitably going to get into. Um, these are quite complex decisions and, and they could have dire consequences for a decade or more. When we talk about personal finance education in schools, it doesn't have to be a particular programme. I mean, there are some qualifications that people can take, but one of the difficulties with the qualification route is that not all young people will go down that route. So, for example, um, uh, every, not everybody does business studies. Um, not everybody would do a certificate in financial studies. What we do hope to do is, is introduce elements of financial education with a whole range of subjects. So, for example, when you're looking at mathematics, you're looking at how you apply mathematics in practice. So it's, it's not just about the kinds of maths that lots of people find difficult, like you know, trigonometry and, and quadratic equations, that kind of thing. But, um, but how do you work out how much you're going to pay back if you take out a loan? What does compound interest mean? Um, what's your approach to probability and risk? And all of those things can be covered in mathematics lessons. What mathematics can't always do is look at the broader issues around finance, the kinds of re way that people take decisions that affect their emotions. You know, not everybody makes rational decisions. And in fact, most of us at various stages in our life make, make quite strange decisions. And we need to be able to think about these things and explore them in issues like the, um, the personal social health education lessons that, uh, that young people have at schools where you're looking at much broader issues around financial responsibility and uh, issues like free trade, um, the global economy, um, how these impact on, on how young people, uh, what they need to learn uh, to survive in life. Uh, I mean, what we find is, is that young people really enjoy doing lessons around money. Um, they can see the relevance of working um, with, with, on issues which are going to affect them um, both now and in the future. I mean, many young people already have jobs when they're at school. Um, they're already extremely astute consumers. Um, most of them have mobile phones. Um, there's a whole range of issues. And so when we put personal finance education um, into the classroom, um, into lessons and activities, then they can really see the relevance of it. And they think it's important and they want to do it. Um, and the way that we structure the lessons, um, they're fun as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a really enjoyable experience. Um, and the teachers too, although many of them, um, it's a little bit out of their comfort zone. They didn't go into teaching to teach personal finance. They went there because they love science or history or something. But what they, what they find is that it engages their young people um, and it helps them to deliver their curricular objectives. So, you know, it can be a very positive experience for everybody. I, mean, I think some schools have always done something around, around financial education, but, but most schools haven't. And I think the reason it's getting such a high profile now is that the papers are full of, of the dire predictions about what's going to happen in the future. Um, you know, the pensions gap, the, the fact that, that we, as a nation, we owe something like one trillion pounds, which is, you know, rather a lot of money. Um, uh, and, and so the people are, teachers and, and young people are beginning to, to realise that if there is, is part of planning for life, part of becoming an adult, that you need to be able to, to have these skills. I, I think teachers are often less than confident about teaching personal finance. So it's very important that they do receive the, receive the training that they need so that they will feel happy integrating it into their lessons. Um, most of it isn't rocket science, and so often there, there's a fear factor which, which puts them off, but actually when they, when they have the training, they think, oh, well, that's okay then, you know, we can do this. Um, it does make sense, and it's not as difficult as we thought it was. But there is an element of hand-holding and, and making sure that people do get the right kind of, of information and training to make them feel confident about teaching it.
Uh, and PFEGS feels that you can never start uh, young enough. So what we believe is that you start with four-year-olds and you build up. So as an organisation, we have resources and information and guidance for, for teachers dealing with four-year-olds through to 19. Um, what you don't do, of course, is you don't take four-year-olds through the niceties of the stock exchange. Uh, you build up to this, but it's rather like learning a language. If you are going to have the grammar and the structure and the vocabulary, then the sooner you can start building up the framework, the easier you will find it as you get older. I mean, clearly, when, when young people are getting to 14, 15, 16 and, and into the sixth form, then they have much more relevant needs and that they can then really see the point of it. But, you know, the sooner the better is I think we should be starting. Schools aren't forced to teach personal finance education. You can find it in a number of places in the curriculum. It can be in mathematics, in, in personal social health education, uh, within work-related learning. But there are no sanctions for not teaching it. And many children can go through the whole of their school lives without ever having any financial education. I mean, we feel that's a great shame. Um, and we're pleased to see that, that things are, are shifting in terms of more and more teachers and schools thinking it's an important thing to do. Um, uh, at PFEG, we've seen an increasing demand for our services. So, for example, um, when I came to this organisation six years ago, our website visits were about 500 a month, and we're now up to about 35,000. There's still a lot to do, but what we have found is that there, there is increasing interest, um, and hopefully that will continue to grow. Uh, one of the problems for teachers looking at uh, putting personal finance in, into, their, uh, into their schools is, is the, the curriculum is very overcrowded. So, for example, if you're looking at personal social health education, it has to compete with sex and drugs. If you're looking at citizenship, it's competing with the environment and, and politics. Um, so what we have to do, and, and PFEG works very hard at this, is, is making the case for why it's a good thing to do, why it's going to tick the curriculum boxes um, and also engage young people in a way which will make the lessons enjoyable and therefore nicer and easier for the teachers. Um, I mean PFEG is always very interested to hear from people. Um, we have a, a, what we think is an excellent website but we also would welcome feedback on, on how we could improve it and you can look at that at www.pfeg.org and we're always happy to, to hear from people.